So um, I'm here to present to you our last speaker and closing keynote of the day by Professor Dr. Muhammad Mbeze Mihigo. I hope I pronounced that well. He's the Vice uh, Chancellor of the Kampala International University in Uganda. He steers several Dutch African collaboration projects. And next to Leiden, he works with Delft, Rotterdam and Amsterdam. He'll be sharing with us his personal reflections of the day and highlight the role of reverse linkages and localization of knowledge. And he'll also share with us the key takeaways from the co-creation sessions right now. Thank you so much for being here and welcome on stage. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm endowed with height, so somebody needs to come and adjust uh, a bit of the microphone. Yes, uh, so good evening. I know I'm standing here uh, between your next, you know, drive out of this place uh, and listening to the summary. I must say that uh, this evening, uh, it's a great privilege to share the takeaway points. Uh, what did we capture since morning? Of course, this is the hardest task because I must remember the most important things on your behalf. Uh, first of all, I must uh, congratulate all the speakers uh, who were able to write from the mayor. You know, that first uh, interaction and the speech by the mayor and the chair of the board of uh, LUMC uh, and also the subsequent speakers. I think the proverbs were very enriching uh, and put into perspective uh, the science week, science and health week, uh, which is being celebrated here at Leiden. So let me start with the last uh, sessions where we had some more uh, engagements. I think uh, from the focus groups, especially on the manufacturing bit, uh, the conclusions basically uh, from the discussions in the, in the groups uh, showed that this is not an easy task, it's very challenging. Uh, and then uh, definitely, how could we use this ecosystem uh, to be able to contribute? There are gaps that are acceptable. The EU Commission uh, has given a very good example of how we could work together, and then how we all communicate to the manufacturing ecosystem. There is a gap, as we already noticed. I must uh, add here that from my experience, I think the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown uh, really brought us all together. We know that uh, it did not respect borders. There was no requirement for visa to cross uh, from one country to another. Uh, some countries were hard hit in the first uh, period of the pandemic more than the others, uh, but then it all equalized. And so the realization of uh, vaccines and vaccine development came to the fold, you know, to the open. Uh, and and institutions, research centers, universities, you know, manufacturing companies, the pharmaceuticals were no longer operating in silos. They, they realized, no, this is for all of us because uh, it was not the issue of natural selection, which is the usual uh, scientific approach to uh, disease control and survival for the fittest. But this time around, it just picked, you know, whenever it found it would hit you hard. So, uh, and then uh, quite a number of things that I think this is going to be shared. And, and then uh, we had also uh, from the same manufacturing uh, session, uh, it was very critical. Members actually discussed the example of Rwanda, where the model of good leadership uh, actually uh, became uh, worth, you know, worthwhile. It was because of that leadership, straight leadership, affirmative action, that the country was able to, you know, take advantage of almost, you know, uh, vaccination of the entire population and then uh, following the protocols as compared where leadership was lacking. Uh, the issue of talent identification and retention, because quite a number of projects have actually produced uh, very good talents, retrained, retooled, but then you know, within a short time, people look for what uh, we call greener pastures in Africa. So they find themselves back in, in Europe, you know, yet you've trained them uh, to be able to build and produce more capacity. 
There is existing capacity that remains unknown. So this particular group was focused on seeing whether it's possible to develop a database of professionals, of existing capacities of scientific labs, uh, of collaborators, of uh, organizations that are interested in the type of research. Uh, and of course, uh, there was one very interesting one, uh, you know, balancing between the business model. On one hand, people have to make the money. Uh, on the other, part of that money needs to be rechanneled uh, for very philanthropic reasons. And I think that was uh, something that uh, we all talked about. And there were some volunteer companies that are willing to uh, pay some form of tax annually uh, towards the development of a fund that can actually grow uh, in support of the underserved uh, uh, areas of vaccines and vaccine development and capacity to control uh, pandemics and other diseases. Now on the other digital uh, health world, I think the Vodan Africa uh, model and it's real, it's practical, has demonstrated that it's possible uh, to use uh, digital health uh, to actually uh, understand the patterns of spread, you know, bringing on board policymakers, uh, and then we can be more innovative even using uh, limited resources because the Vodan Africa project, uh, and, you know, with all due respect, we received support, seed funding from Philips, from Invest, and so on and so forth. Uh, however, this model showed that, you know, with existing capacity in the African continent, it's very, very possible for us to uh, work with the uh, North uh, to be able to uh, combat such a disease. Uh, of course, there was uh, an issue of benchmarking uh, from this example, and then uh, trying to look at the clinical applications uh, of the capacity that has been built, and of course, expounding on, on public health. My closing remarks, having tried to summarize, and if I've left a key point from uh, your submission, uh, I think I do beg your pardon uh, because of the time. I want to say uh, on behalf of every one of you, I appreciate your contributions. This has been a great symposium. Uh, I would like to say that uh, we openly discussed and I'm so happy and this spirit should be able to continue. Uh, we also need to think about the concept of FAIR, the verification of, uh, uh, of, of data, health data, uh, with you know, the respect to privacy, respect to regulators and governments in Africa. We know there's a lot of bureaucracy, but it's important that we should be thinking about the ethical application of uh, FAIR internet, uh, especially for the developing uh, parts of the world. The collaboration, and this is my baby, I know that uh, the world has thrived through competition. I think it's no longer appropriate. Uh, we now have to enhance collaboration and cooperation rather than competition. We can compete in best practices, we can benchmark, but uh, I think now we should be raising the flags for our collaboration and cooperation. However, we still have uh, a disparity of, you know, what we call high-end developed countries and those that are upcoming. So how do we realize this in the context of our symposium? Uh, number one, I think it's important that we identify the strength of those that have an upper hand. Number two, instead of looking at the weaknesses of those that are upcoming, we should look at the potential that we can actually uh, enhance. So this is the, the basic principle of what I call the reverse linkage. So you have, I have prospects of having, not that I'm lacking, but I have prospects. <laughs> so it's important we, we keep a positive mind and approach. And so with digital health, with application of technology, with uh, sharing the dividends of your hard work and investment in science and technology in the North, as compared to many of the countries in Asia and Africa, we think we can share uh, what we both uh, have in our own capacities and then optimizing on some of the successful uh, projects. So I want to end here by thanking uh, all the organizers and also appreciating your time. Uh, I would like to call upon the organizers to keep us up to speed so that this is not a talking show. 
uh, can we outline some of the uh, deliverables so that if this becomes an annual event, we are able to come here and account for our time and for the resources that have been invested. All the best, and I want to hand over back to the MC. Uh, what a privilege it has been. I hope we can continue with our life sciences uh, and health week here in Leiden and also take back home the messages of collaboration and cooperation, but also compete to explore those that are ahead of us so that we can catch up with them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Mohamed Mbezimihiko. I'm sorry I did that right. Um, that was very inspiring and in insightful. And uh, as you mentioned uh, correctly, this is not a talking show. And that's the last couple of words that I'll be telling you today. So we have an impressive, rich ecosystem here today. Um, and we can really make a change if each and every one of you actually take action. Um, and for that, we need to collaborate.